clouds part ways to reveal a floating castle, secluded from the rest of the world. An island of isolation, solitude, and peace. A private escape in the middle of nowhere. A young girl plays in a garden filled with robots, some misshapen and odd. Magnolia blossoms fall in the garden, and she dances around gleefully. She laughs and twirls, having the time of her life. She starts to run after the machine with four legs. Running up to it, grabbing its shoulders, and yelling, TAG! She hits him, then sprints off, giggling. Another robot tries to hide around the back of the tree, tempting not to get caught by the oncoming four-legged behemoth. Lily, you're going to get caught if you keep hiding in plain sight! <laughs> On the other side of the river, a pleasant chuckle eeks out of the mouth of yet another onlooker. By the riverside, another robot is sitting with her legs crossed, watching happily. She's sitting on the ground, weaving together little bits of flowers into a nice circlet. The girl chases around, running away from the four-legged wizard's oncoming barrage. Eventually, he ra grabs his hand around her shoulder, yells, TAG! And sprints, leaping high up into the magnolia tree. She walks over, staring up at him. And at that point, a black-cloaked figure walks into the room. Ah, so, how are you enjoying my garden, little one? The girl smiles and grins. It's the best, Mr. Magus! Your friends are all very nice! Hey, he went away! It's not fair to use your powers to your advantage. Sir! She was so fast! It was the only way I could get out with my life! <laughs> it was just a joke, Clunk! Clunk! Kid, my registration code is E108! Snapdragon! You look like a Clunk to me. Hmm. Very well! I am now the Great Wizard, Clunk! Fear the monster you have wrought upon this world! He puts his arm out in a powerful pose. A fuse pops and smoke trails up from the arm and he falls out of the tree, <laughs> landing in a heap. He scrambles, trying to get up, a sheepish look on his face. The girl laughs hysterically. After things have died down, the girl and the Black Mega sit beside the stream, tossing stones across the water. Will you teach me a magic trick? Huh. Well, what type of magic trick? Like, like a really good one. One that'll make me go, wow. Wow, huh? <laughs> sure, kiddo. This one's one of my favorites. I'll call it the quick draw. He whips his hand out and materializes an ethereal gun in it, raises it to the sky, and a puff of confetti explodes from the barrel, scattering in the wind down on everything. Cha ha you just need a spark of inspiration, and, and one of these. He holds out a small piece of pyrite. Now, focus your energy on the crystal. Try and form it. Think of the color you would want to see. He takes the piece, and you start to see a black energy glowing around the crystal, and it melts into her hand, a shadowy black gun appearing. She raises the gun into the air, and instead of confetti, it just showers the group with a light spray of oil. Spatters and bits of it spray out and get caught in the Black Magus's mustache. His face is covered by a cloak, so his expression is unreadable, but you can tell he's grinning. Uh, very well done, Versi. Now, you've, you've got an interesting imagination. The girl smiles, silver hair now matted with black tar and bits of confetti. You command a great tact, mistress! Clunk 
tilts his head and walks over. Thank you, Clunk. You're very kind. The machine pats her head, and time passes. We feel the same scene now at night. The excitement has died down. Fireflies float around in the moonlight. The child sits with her feet in the water. Beside her is the same roped figure. They sit there, taking in the beauty of it for a moment. Then, the Black Magus makes a little glow of magic and summons an ornate bronze box into his hands. The box is elaborately crafted, gears inset in gears. Here, this is for you. He opens it, and at first there is nothing, but slowly the gears creak and bring themselves to life. A soft melody begins to float out of the box. The machines from the room slowly creep towards it, entranced by its majesty. The girl spins around looking at all of them and begins to grin and laugh. One of them on the other side of the river takes a step, stumbles, and starts to fall into the water. The Black Magus gasps. The girl bolts up, leaping over the river, a lance of shadow springing from her arm, cushioning the robot's fall. She lifts her back up and places her on the side of the river. Ah, my, I, ah, ah. Mercy lands right next to her. Rose, is it? She blushes and kind of shies away. You really seem to like that music box. Would you like to have it? But... But Papa made it for you. That's okay. I can hear it every time I come and visit you. Uh, I, I, uh, uh, all right. The girl legs back towards the Black Magus. He smiles and tosses the book or the box over to her, and she deftly catches it with shadows. Here, she hands it to the robotic girl, who happily takes it in her hands and stares, awestruck. She walks back over the bridge and comes to sit down next to the Magus. Well, that was a very kind thing you did there, Mercy. She needed it more. Ah, uh, you'll make a great Magister one day. <gasps> you mean that? Well, sure do. You've got the gall, don't you? You leaped into action faster than I could think. I surely can't hold the post forever. One day, someone will take, will have to take over for these old bones. You, you mean you won't be around forever? Ah, things happen. What could be on set with attackers on the outside? Who knows? There are many enemies we have out there. I know. Doesn't matter though. I'll protect us. The Black Magus looks up, smiling. Anyone who's in danger, I'll be there. Those outsiders won't know what hit him. She does a little karate chop. Just let them know the greatest magister who ever lived is coming for them. Fercule Hysterica, master of shadows. They'll run before they even see me. <laughs> oh, Fercule Hysterica, huh? That's a very imposing name you've chosen there. What? I like it. She sits down next to the riverbank. Every wizard's gotta have their wizard name. I want something cool. Something that suits me. Like Fercule. And Hysterica. Because you make your enemies laugh a lot? The Black Magus post pokes her in her side, and she giggles and falls backwards into the grass, looking up at the sky. <laughs> yeah. She starts to summon a bit of shadow, and runs it under the grass stealthily towards the Lion Magus. He pretends not to notice, and then falls into a fit of laughter when it starts swirling around her. He blasts her back with a similar spell, and the two roll around for a moment. Ah, uh, okay, okay, truth. <laughs> You're good, Hysterica. Real good. The girl beams at this, and the dream fades like a watercolor painting in rain. 
The girl, now slightly older, walks hurriedly down a hallway with the black cloaked figure. He stops her midway, holding his arm out. Hang on. They're here already. I'm going to be careful. Just follow my lead. Suddenly, in front of them on the terrace, many motes of light appear. Small portals, much akin to the large one they were fleeing to. Different colored figures with skulls strapped to their belts step out in a menacing huddle. Black Magus, if that is what you are called, by decree of the unseelie accords and the law of the plane hoppers, we find you in violation of the most abhorrent of crimes, manipulation of the weave, an attempt to summon outsiders, elder gods, to this realm. We hereby sentence you to an immediate execution. No! I'm... I'm not going to let you hurt him! She starts to form a shadow ball around her arms, rings of light appearing around them as well. Wizro sternly gazes at her. Stay out of this, kid. This is beyond you. This man is not what he seems. And he effortlessly dispels her magic with one hand, keeping the other trained very expertly on the Black Magus. Your options are none, Magus. We know the location of your real body. You may give up this game of yours now. Running will not save you again. You can count on that. The cool wizard just snaps aggressively in the background. Now, hold on a second, partner. <sighs> he steps to the side away from the girl. She stretches her arms out to him longingly, but the serious tone in his voice causes her to hesitate. You seem to think I'm... Just going to give in? That would be quite wise of you. You are outnumbered seven to one. Wow. Well, I only see six of you. Regardless, you of all people should be well aware that I will outpower every one west of y'all. On the contrary, we know who you are, and you're still one against seven. When I get ten, my subjects are people too, Dr. Chovy. Unless you count this one's apprentice, then we'd be, uh, ten to two? Yes, ten to two. Tea time! <laughs> We've seen through your tricks, huh? We know your location. Uh, our best men soon will have you surrounded. Oh, yes! Any last words before I suplex your stupid face? And then he mutters underneath his breath. Blumsh, of course. A gun materializes in his hand, a smoky flint block, and he quickly aims it at the wizards. Draw! Many things happen at once. A portal opens behind the Black Magus. He fires the gun, its deadly salvo flying forth and hitting Dr. Chovy in the chest. She struggles as some magical force overwhelms her body. Wizro hurls a ball of pure fiery energy. The other plane hopper's placing ethereal chains on the Black Magus, pulling him to the ground. He struggles to escape but can't. He tries to speak, but a spell from Elog bounces to life and binds his lips shut with a snap. The girl screams and reaches out for him as the bolt from Wizro impacts his body. His form wriggles, absorbing the energy and bursts, dissolving into a fine mist. Uh, from the portal behind him, a massive snake curls its way out. Eyes a deep yellow and teeth a bristling black. The suplex wizard runs in head first and attempts to grab the snake in a choke lock. The girl falls onto the floor, tears welling up in her eyes. She doesn't hear the battle. She doesn't see the snake. She just clutches the cloak on the ground and falls on her side in a shuddering heap. Suddenly, on the rooftop, a form crouching it leaps upwards, disappearing in a spray of smoke. And then, sh a massive scythe appears, but for a moment, slicing through the worm in one clean motion, decapitating it. Its head falls to the floor and starts to rot immediately as the bits of the body just disintegrate in place. It lands, a perfect stance, 
crouching next to Versi. It picks her crying form up and leaps back up onto the rooftop. It gives one more glance towards Wizro's group, as if determining whether or not to fight. You can almost swear you see tears in its eyes as it turns and runs across the top of Lorenza. Quickly, after them! They're probably going for the gate! And as he yells this, forms, hundreds of them, thousands of them, come out of the air and out of the castle. The cool wizard stops snapping and looks up for one moment. Oh shit. Eh? What now, Wizbiz? I don't think I can suplex all of those at once. All the wizards pull back, launching spells of fire, ice, and lightning. A great clamor echoes amongst the labyrinth winds. Come on! We can't lose our ground! Uh, Wizro summons a portal and teleports the entire group. He teleports the group up onto the rooftop, and they sprint, casting defensive wards and lightning bolts, attempting to brute force their way through the oncoming onslaught. Wizro... I sense something coming. It's big. It's it's not like the others. Get ready to hit it with all you've got! It's a match for for my puppets. Eh, Don't worry, I'll suplex it. On its face! Yeah, whatever. A form, massive, shadowy, gears protruding at odd angles, comes up from the rooftop to attack the group. Hundreds of masks on one shadowy form, faces contorted in screams, all surrounded in a whirl of blue and pink energy. And then the vision fades like mist in moonlight. <laughs>